Right, Joe Burgess' the second try, I don't understand how when Willie Isa kicked it, Liam Farrell wasn't in front of him. I've watched the replay and it maybe, maybe just level, but mm. I don't think both feet were behind the kick. But that one was questionable. Um, but they, you know, they plugged away strong and they, they scored a couple of tries themselves. We can also had Liam Marshall kicking goals, so he missed right. a few of the conversions before he found his eye in the second half. So it was kind of what you'd expect. We're getting, mm. we're getting too good, but not. Not convincing. Not, not yeah. entertaining, All right, unfortunately, entertaining. from Wigan. What about the young kids? Because there's a number of young kids in the 19. Who's, did anyone stand out in particular? Off well, Josh Ganson grabbed his first try. Right. Um, scooting from dummy half is kind of what he does a lot over the under-19s oppositions. Mm. So doing it at this level um, didn't expect. Did, didn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two wingers scored tries to celebrate their new deals. But n- Callum Field came into the side to replace... The um, migraine affected George Williams. Mm. I don't feel like he was ever going to play, if I'm honest. Right. Um, and yeah, Jack Wells looks at, looks the part for me. He looks to every bit the part. A uh, Super League player, he's got great physicality um, for his age. Is right. really coming along well. So some other positives to be taken away more long term and holistically as well. Yeah, for Swinton, the back line particularly played well, and they can create. And I think as long as they're forwards can match up which they can do against championship forwards I think they should find a way of pushing towards safety because they've got enough creativity in that starting line up Um, the weak area for me was the back row they they missed a few tackles in the back row shot out of the line they weren't they weren't um, disciplined enough in the back row I don't think at times very good Okay, Uh, final game of the round then saw Warrington taking on Witness in this Cheshire Derby 34 points to 20 a close run affair where Witness held the lead at one point yeah loads of people got in touch again on the other BBC game so Mike L Donnelly great to hear from Mike Mm. been a while Um, good on you fella said anticipated a finally balanced encounter with Derby intensity and was not disappointed Warrington showing their experience and Kevin Brown with relative class on field dealt with the Witness team and fans and respectively, respectfully, great to see Betts giving young players the opportunity in a highly charged atmosphere. Particularly impressed by Danny Walker holding his own against Wiley veteran Chris Hill. A thoroughly <laughs> enjoyable game. Yeah, it was good to see that, wasn't it? Neil McKeown got in touch and said, "Great game to watch." Apart from the result, thought Witness played well, especially the young lads brought in because of more injuries. Sad face about the I guess. Kevin Judas Brown had a great game. As much as it hurts me to say, think Brad Walker had another stormer from the bench. Hard to believe he's only seventeen. Team. Tyler Cass fans said why look the stronger team on paper So and so it proved feel sorry for the Vikings already beaten up this season lots more lost more players injured in this one but at least they went out and had a go and kept the get, kept in the game for 70 minutes there you go Alfie got in touch and said by far the best game of this tie I think he means round, round. Uh, Why I won the first 10 minutes but then witnessed the second 10 minutes and so it continued right through the game about time we got a great game for the domestic airways uh, well done Ratchford who was faultless Brown showed up for the full 80 minutes and Patton was steady away like a week in Tom's world my week's always steady away Alfie uh, all behind a rock steady forward pack well done witness though as it takes two to tango Mark W said enjoyed this one expected a lot more one sided apart from the last 10 minutes it was a good close game that could have gone either way going to take a drink every time a witness fan uses the word snake in this episode very good uh, Wire Joe said didn't think childs had a great game, uh, but the combination of the Smellies being up for the derby and us being pretty shit made for a decent contest. In the end, Pinhead Brown guided us to the win, despite not being flawless. Uh, there's time for us to find some fluidity in the next couple of weeks, but we'll need to be a hell of a lot better to get past Wigan in the next round. I think we'll have to be a hell of a lot fitter. But... Well, possibly. Paul Ludo Lewis said, Academy lads does us proud. Sign them up on long-term deals and play them till the end of the season. Chris Hill is a bull slop who should have been Simbi. <laughs> And I hope the rat trick hero shitty little cafe goes into liquidation. <laughs> James Children can do one too. Ludo lights up my Monday nights oftentimes with things like this. It's it's At least Chris Hill's made the, the bold and sensible decision to finally shave off what he had left. Yeah. There's a lot of people that cling on, isn't there? Desperately to having air. 
Yeah. Longer than you would think necessary. In that list, I rank behind <laughs> You rank behind Gale. Luke Gale. <laughs> but you are far behind him. You can see Luke Gale in the distance. He's not, he's not a million miles in front of you. What do you reckon to this one then? Fair is all. Witness had some had some traps in this one. I don't think it Kids was a fair result. No? I feel like on the handicap of what the side they had out, I mean, you know, Lloyd Roby, I'd never even heard of him. Liam Walsh has only played, I think, once, maybe twice before. He isn't doesn't look like he's ready for this level of play yet. Mm. Jordan Johnston playing in the halves. Um, and then young Danny Walker... I mean, we talked how good he was. I also think James Chappell, how of the younger players, was exceptional too. Good, 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 good try and deserve that very much. So, mm. but yeah, top top young player he is. Those those two, those last two we talked about. Mm. Um, the Ch- people have mentioned James Charles, so yeah, he he called a few a couple of decisions that got overturned by the video ref, didn't he? Rightfully overturned by the video ref. So you can criticise him for that. I didn't, nothing else stood out for me, but. Maybe because I, I was like watching it with my neutral that. hat on and stuff, but a few people have mentioned it, so, you know, those things mm. worth covering. I don't know about the rest, if I'm honest. I don't like to criticise a referee for sending up a call and then having it overturned by the video referee, because that is entirely the point of having a video referee, for me. So you can't, I, I don't like to say, oh, we're well, a bit of a shitter, because no, somebody's called They're the only turn. things I could pick up yeah. myself. I didn't see any. Apart from the Hill, I think maybe Hill deserved a bit of punishment for what happened. But if you didn't see what he did, if mm. you didn't see him sort of giving him the, him the elbow in the face sort of nudge. He just, he just nudged it. I feel a bit sorry for Chris Hill, to be honest. He's just a bit, you know, just a bit of IG, but just a bit friendly. Yeah, yeah. A bit playful. And it's hard to miss Danny Walker's ears, isn't it? With what, well, with yeah, the wind up, Christ alive, yeah, exactly. But he got, do you know what? He got stuck in though, didn't he? And you've got to love the lad. Like, yeah. The game when he, his tackle almost created the winning scenario against St. Helens, didn't mm. it? And he was, he was up for that sort of stuff again yeah. um, in this one. So a lot of credit for him. There was, I think there was the one where he put Ratchford in, in goal, didn't mm. he, for a dropout. Yeah. When the scores were even. And yeah. I think if, if Witness could have better controlled the few sets at mm. that stage, then, then they would have, been, would have been in a position to win. But unfortunately, a few errors and a few... Mm. Uh, injuries then just caught up and it's so it's a shame for witness I, I I don't know I felt like they didn't get out of this maybe what they quite deserved do you think based on what you saw um, Rangy Chase is going to come in and add what they need then in terms of that game management perhaps or that bit of flair that will give them some attacking chops it's somewhat different to worry about mm. it means that you can't just line up an extra man on the side where Reese Hanbury is and if you if you if you call if the if the man if the right man picks him out then they're not going to score sort of thing mm. i do think that yeah. and witness have got that offloading game in them that that they sometimes uh fling about was it there a, a set where they went like i don't Virtually know them. yeah mm. yeah they've got they've got players that could lend themselves well to getting on the end of some rangy chase stuff haven't they talking of young players morgan smith keeps doing okay for for Warrington is not big enough to defend the middle very well, so I, I don't see him as a hooker long term in the in the top level unless he it, it maybe works a bit in that area. But I think he's got a lot of promise as a as a yeah. ball player. Yeah, um, certainly. Well, it adds something different though as well, doesn't it? To the well, it's a different well, style Brad of play. He's not to a play. massive lad though, isn't it's he? A different he style in. of play that they have to. Yeah, he doesn't mm. make a lot of tackles, so he doesn't mm. play a lot of minutes. Yeah. Um, it's a different style of play that they have to play with distributors like Gidley and Smith compared to sort of darters like Dwyer and Clark. Yeah. But I suppose Warrington, yeah, in the end, were the better team yeah. um, overall. It started like that on paper and it ended like that, didn't it? There you go. So, plus I It's hard to not feel sorry for Witness. Though. I do feel sorry for yeah. Witness. I do feel very sorry yeah. for it. I mean, it must be hard work being a fan of Witness at the minute because oh, it's not attitude, is it? I, I don't injuries. feel it is. I think mm. it's recruitment mm-hmm. and ability to put your best players out on the on the pitch. Yeah. I don't think their attitude can be questioned. There's a lot of players like working their asses off slightly out of position and stuff in this game and um because they ended up with props in the back row all game, didn't they? Yeah. Um 
I, it's not attitude, and I, I don't think I, I, I can understand why people would be calling for Betts' name, given that they're losing so many games and they're in a perilous mm-hmm. position. But I really don't think it's not Dennis Betts' fault that he's managed to maintain a core of his hardworking team, and then that hasn't been supplemented by a splashy forward yeah. like a Fafita's type mm. or a another experienced half. Yeah. to come in I, I feel like that's they've been let down a little bit yeah. outside of that well I said at the start of the season I feel like Dennis Betts has taken this club as far as he can do and that wasn't to besmirch him that was just to say that he's obviously a coach of some you know yeah he's got he's got a reputation he's, he's, he's a coach of some repute um, maybe he just needs a different environment where there aren't quite so many restrictions on the purse strings or structures in place in terms of you know that first team investment to, to, to flourish and take the next step yeah. in his career. You can't polish a turd and at the moment winners are a turd not by virtue of their attitude but by virtue of the fact that all the good play they're all bloody injured. You can't just invent you can't or, just, or just coming back from injury yeah, and which is equally as hard it's hard, work, hard it? it's hard work. It really is. So that's the sixth round of the Challenge Cup. We've had the draw made as well Mark so we know what the quarterfinals look like. Do you want to talk us through those? Yeah well the draw came out first with Warrington at home to Wigan Leeds Getting um, they, they got hot the, balls, hot balls conspiracy. They got the only League One side left in the last round, and they got the only Championship side left, left oh, in I this see. round. Yeah. So that's uh, not a bad, and both at home, not a bad situation for the Rhinos against Ferguson, Salford, Wakefield, and Hull FC Castleford. We now know the TV running order will mm. be the Thursday night game will be Salford, Wakefield. Yeah. So uh, cue lots more conversation about shit crowds. Um, Friday will be Leeds Featherstone then the Saturday will be Warrington against Wigan which is disappointing from Uncle Liam because he won't be able to go because he'll be working oh. uh, and then the Sunday and me because that means I have to drive the Sunday will <laughs> FCV Castleford which is definitely the pick of the round isn't it well I would say it's, it's 1v2 from a neutral point of view yeah. you've got the top 6 in Super League still in the final 8 mm-hmm. that's that that makes should make everyone excited about this cup competition yeah and then, obviously, yeah, it would have been nicer if Featherstone had a home draw, I think. And then, you know, Warrington are a team that have got a really good recent cup pred- pedigree, mm. the amount of finals they've reached, and won quite a few too in the last 10 years. Yeah. So what does all that mean in terms of our predictions then, Matt? Because obviously, you know, Super Brew or Dream Team this week. Well, you went 8 of 8, and I went 7 of 8. Uh, that means, cumulatively, I'm on 54 and you're on 57. You stretch your lead a little bit. I'm hoping to come back you're at some point. To, Yeah, you're going to pick us back. But like you said, you're going to take some risks now, aren't you, with your picks, just to try and rein me in. Yeah, a little bit. Talk Which about... Uh, it might help when Wigan turn things around as well. Well, yeah, exactly. You won't bet against your boys, will you? You can't um, give up on that. I can't. Um, anyway, mentioning Super Brew, mm. Brews has opened up a State, State of Origin, Origin pool, okay. so that'll be up because it's the first game in a couple of weeks now. Not far off, is it? No. Season's flying by. Right, okay, that's the Challenge Cup taken care of. Let's take a look now at some results from elsewhere in the world of rugby league. So then, so results from elsewhere in Rugby League, no championship fixtures this week, so we start at round 7 of League 1, and they certainly got their money's worth down at Cougarland. Keith the Cougars defeated 42 points to 58 by the Barrow Raiders. Um, yeah, yeah, on the, on the Aussie coverage at the weekend, hmm. there was um, the Titans game, mm-hmm. Vossi was talking about like the biggest losing scores in rugby league history right? and he obviously overlooked that one happened two days before that was yeah, yeah, everything yeah. out of the war or three days before mm. but yeah um, Brian Davies going to it, she said a game dominated by defences not just the 100 points <laughs> 42 58 to Barrow Barrow got a big first half lead and then fumbled and let Keithley claw back to within 10 points before kicking on again a few fights broke out which suggests that when Barrow play Toronto next week they might be tempted to put ropes around the pitch and walk out the tunnel wearing silk dressing gowns Barrow go top of the league there you go congratulations Barrow I am looking forward to that one uh, it was Newcastle 22 Toronto 40 so a credible performance from the Thunder yeah, and Elliot Range said, we now always expect Toronto to win by some margin, and that's how it looked from the off. First half was definitely theirs, but I'd give the second to the Thunder from up yonder. Very nice. 
I like they that. pulled off some great plays to score excellent tries. Great skills on show that really made Toronto work for it. The second non-Super League game I've watched in two days and another superb show. There you go. Brian Davies said, Most even match Toronto have played. Played on the 4G pitch so the pitch wasn't a level. A sim- Thunder simply played well and are a decent side. The difference was some individual class from the Wolfpack. Look out for the match against Barrow next week with Wolfpack no doubt short a few due to discipline and Barrow in fine. 